You're not going to deny somebody who wants to dance, and you would know that better than anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't put that together. He likes the dance. <laughs> he does. That's, I love that's the dance. This is all coming from. <laughs> he Dang it. The they caught me. <laughs> I all right. He was a dancer when he was a kid. Yep. Let's, let's start. I up. just showed my wife some videos of me dancing as a kid. Oof. Mm. At, at Thanksgiving. At Thanksgiving? Yeah. She didn't. We were a little upset that she didn't record any via. Well, my stepdad phone. started to put them on to DVDs. Ooh. So now we're talking. They'll be coming out now soon. We're talking. <laughs> let's, let's start. With a little player comparison of kind of who you would give up, maybe some of these guys might you know involve some draft picks on either end. But what let's let's start at the high end of Lamar Miller or Alex Collins. Well, it's a bit of a conundrum because of the contract situation with Lamar Miller. They're gonna have to pay him like six to seven million dollars next year to keep him, which I don't think they would have a problem doing. I don't see why they wouldn't pay him that money. He was so stellar gonna, with Watson. I'm, and that's the thing right there. Watson. Deshaun and, Watson. And your rookie just blew out his Achilles, which, you know, maybe you really like him, but still. Yeah. That's you know, a while. Achilles that's is a, a big while deal. to come back from. So I'm going to I'm gonna bank on the fact that I think that Lamar Miller's still going to be with the Texans next year. And his value, I mean, I already like Lamar Miller, and I think he'd do well wherever right. he goes. But in this Deshaun Watson Houston offense, uh, give me Lamar Miller all day. Who is still, you know, still doing got fine elevated for you. T- in those couple of weeks for Deshaun, but we just, he's, what is he, running back 12, 12, 11, yeah, 11 I think somewhere right now, and he's still doing yeah. just fine without Watson, but Watson was, you know, pretty silly. The yeah. reason I brought Lamar Miller up is because there's plenty of people who hate Lamar Miller, and this is the hot guy right now. Yeah. You know, he's Ben Affleck. <laughs> and. <laughs> You know, so I could I could see somebody, you know, I play with plenty of guys in plenty of leagues who just like that flavor of the week and would, you know, Lamar Miller's been up and down and there's all sorts of hate around him. That's so, why I meant to Big Co, Lamar Miller or Alex Collins. I'm going to go with the, the, the established guy. I'm going to stay with Lamar Miller. That you know has been there and done it and, right. and can do it, yep. which is fair. I think we're all staying with Lamar Miller on this one. Yeah, just, just uh, sometimes I feel like we don't... Stuff doesn't need to be said because it should just be obvious, but sometimes you need to no, a lot down. of hate on Lamar Miller every just yeah. incredible amount actually. Let's move to the next guy, Tevin Coleman. I know we all liked Tevin Coleman coming out of Indiana. Well, uh, who who wants to take this one? I'll t- well let me take it because the tough part about Tevin Coleman is that Devontae Freeman established himself and and coming into this year there was that whole well, you know, there's no way they're going to pay two backs. There's so much money to be spent in the NFL. And you don't give it to running backs, and then they locked up Freeman. Freeman obviously just had a couple of weeks out right. with a concussion, but ordinarily uh, Freeman is the epitome of health when it comes to the running back position. So that has been a clog in front of Tevin and a Coleman. Stud RB one, right? Week and in and week exactly. out. Exactly. So Freeman goes out with a concussion. Tevin Coleman comes in and gets twenty carries against a tough defense in Seattle. Gets eighty something, eighty something yards rushing against a tough defense on the road and then plays good the next week but Tev, you know Freeman's back and it's a tough spot for Tevin Coleman you're waiting at the very least a year you're waiting you're waiting so that's that's tough I, but I mean I've seen a lot of I, I like Tevin Coleman I like that he's he's kind of the total package and if they uh, obviously we, I made a lot about the Shanahan exit from F- the Falcons and and didn't make enough about what I thought it would do for the Falcons offense and what he left behind so maybe Tevin Coleman could have had a little bit more standalone value this year while Devontae Freeman was healthy in the lineup if they would have kept Kyle Shanahan, but it didn't happen. And I'm just talking about, you know, stuff that didn't happen for Tevin Coleman, but I still really like Tevin Coleman. Well, Tevin Coleman has been fine all year pretty much. Recently, it's not been as good. He's been a little banged. He had a concussion, was kicked out of the game, or knocked out of the game. But, I mean, I've been playing him all year with Devontae Freeman, and then obviously I was playing him without him. But – so so what's your what's the answer to to the question because you're going to go Tevin Coleman or Alex Collins? I uh, I would st- if you had to t- if I had to do something today I'd still I'd stick with Tevin Coleman as a long-term hold over Collins. Yeah, and I think I have to as well. Like you said he is a total package. He can run and catch a ball and yeah. he's been he's been startable even without Kyle Shanahan running that offense pretty much this whole year. He's been getting you 10 points. He's been a solid bankable RB2 pretty much all year long with and a then, guy in front of him right with you know? the dude in front of him and this is dynasty this is long term I, I'm, I'm i gotta stick with tevin coleman yeah i kind of threw him in here just because of that reason the same lamar miller thing of like people sour easily and this guy's 
the hot topic of the month, I would probably also stick with Tevin Coleman because we've seen him in spots and we've seen him perform with another guy in front of him and we've seen him perform by himself. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I'll, st- I'll stick with Devin Coleman. Mm-hmm. Um, let's uh, how about how about Duke Johnson has been the the absolute fantastic top end of the RB two pool this year for majority of the season, low end RB one for for some weeks. How about Duke or uh, Alex Collins? Who wants it first? I think I'll have to stick with Duke Johnson. I think you got to stick with Duke Johnson. He's got to stay in power, catch his balls. He's versatile, knows how to get his, get his points. You getting revved up over there, Case? So, well, me and Big Co have Duke Johnson in a couple places, and it's like <laughs> pulling teeth to get him in the lineup. <laughs> so I made the I made the comparison of, you know, this is I really like this bicycle. This is a great bicycle. Well, do you want to ride that bicycle? No, nah, I'm not trying to ride that bike. <laughs> but you can ride it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a Big Co on Duke Johnson. Right, right. He's a bicycle that you I, want, I, but you don't want to use. I probably would stick with Duke Johnson as well. I don't know what Crowell's contract situation. I think he's about to be possibly out of there next season. Let's, I think he was playing for a contract this year. Let's check um, our trusty spreadsheet here. And I, I think Duke Johnson can. He's a free agent next year. Duke Johnson can obviously make your day PPR wise, which is what he's basically been doing most of the season. But he's real slippery with the ball in his hands. And he's a, you know, I think he can can run between the tackles given given the opportunity. He doesn't need to be your feature guy like Collins. Um, but I, I, I would, I guess I would probably stick with Duke Johnson as well. Just because he's been so good. like Consistent. Th- yeah. Well, it's just, I mean, like you said, Duke's got 56 catches on the year for 500 yards. and But he's, I mean, he's got 285 rushing yards. It's, 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 it's frustrating with Duke when you get those games to get, hardly any catches and it doesn't right. happen often because it's four for 50 almost every week and when he gives you the six for 80 or the nine for 50 in a touch it's great but yeah. the times the times where he gets two for 20 like that's a four point game sometimes and yeah the four the fours anything under 10 hurts and anything five and under stings like hell and well, you don't forget it easily he's gonna crack a thousand all-purpose yards or yards from yeah all-purpose yards r- rushing and passing combined and he's probably gonna end up with you know, f- six or seven touchdowns. So, yeah, to go with 60, 70 catches, like, and yeah. that's with the shitty Browns. Yeah, yeah. That's well, I mean, you saw, you've seen seen Crowell kind of get back into the fold here and perform pretty well through the last, you know, six, eight weeks or so, and uh, at least six weeks. Mm-hmm. And you know, that probably hindered some of Duke Johnson because he did have a couple of rushing touchdowns in there where he he broke some off and was getting some opportunities to rush the ball. Um, but I'll stick with Duke Johnson in that regard. How about Amir, a guy who's everyone hates right now? Yeah, um, thorn in my side. How about Amir? I love Amir, and I won't, I don't know what's going on there. So I guess I'll probably have to take Alex Collins, though. Big O? Collins. Let me ride the Collins. You going to ride the Collins train? Yep. Because Amir's not doing what, what Duke Johnson is doing. He's not doing what Chris Thompson was doing. What, he's he's not got Theo Riddick in his way to do what Duke Johnson does. Right. Plus. And the Lions line hasn't been creating many yards before contact Terrible. for him. Terrible. Line's been awful. Yeah. Running-wise. Pass blocking's been okay. Um, so give me the dude that's just beasting dudes over. Well, I, I would... I would I want to say Amir, and, yeah. and we'll get into that conversation later uh, at some point down the line here. How everyone loves Theo right now because he's doing work in your in your lineup, but his rushing stats aren't good either. No, like it's just the fact that Theo, there's no Amir, so he's not really splitting any much with anybody else. There's a couple other running backs like Teon Green was. Oh, let's get him some run. He hadn't amounted to anything. He's mm-hmm. he's not really any good. Amir's actually half decent, but but Theo kind of. Now he's got this neck that. issue, and they're yeah. trying to make it look like he's healthy, scratching, but like that's not the case. Yeah. He's hurt. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked with that. Uh, how about P. Ryan, a guy who we all really liked in the offseason? He's, he's been a little up and down. P. Ryan moving forward or Alex Collins? Mm. Man, I want to say P. Ryan here. I want to say P. Ryan too, but Collins looks like uh, what I want P. Ryan to look like and just right. a little bit quicker, a little more swift of foot maybe. And possibly, I mean, Piran's doing when, work in the passing game though. Piran, recently, Piran can catch that offensive when, line over there is a little decimated. It, 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 that's it, it happens, it, and it, it can go. They 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 call the season, you know, quarters, first four weeks, second four weeks. I mean, people are nicked up. Offensive lines get nicked up. Sometimes they get healthy. Sometimes they don't get back healthy. But like those couple weeks where Piran was going, 
Nobody wanted to tackle him. Mm-mm. He's a hard tackle. He bench presses like 800 pounds, 10, 10 <laughs> 15 times, times, no in problem. <laughs> and I, I, P. Ryan is a tough man to tackle. Alex Collins not quite as tough, but a little bit quicker and shiftier, and sometimes that adds up to being tough to tackle too. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a pretty loyal guy. I'm sticking with my guy P. Ryan. I'm yep. going to give him another another uh, opportunity here for next season. You know, Collins had that season. Collins got cut, Bo. Like, yeah. You know, so Piran just got benched for right. fumbling and dropping. So let's the pass. go. Let's go over two more running backs here. How about uh, Jarek McKinnon, who's going to get an opportunity to go somewhere else next year? Uh, you know, has been good in spots. Showed this year a couple of games just a, in a vacuum. Those Could couple be Duke right Johnson s be- right before right before Latavius Murray started looking real fresh. Yeah, you know he 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 can't, he had his coming out party and it was good looking. Like McKinnon was looking real good there for like two or three weeks, just looking real solid. And then Latavius goes, "Hey man, I'm I'm trying to get a paycheck too." Yeah, I can't take anything away from what McKinnon's done, and I don't want to like beat him down or anything. But he did have his chance to be like the number one dude, and he he couldn't he couldn't take that and run with it. Like Alex Collins is barely given the chance to be the number one dude, and he's just wringing that thing dry. So give me Alex Collins. Yeah, I'm with you. I'll take Alex Collins as well over over McKinnon. Me too. So we're all in agreement there. Uh, one more, Jamal Williams, who mm, mm. You, you were not here for that conversation that we've had in the in the past couple of weeks. Uh, We'd be beating Jamal Williams. To death. We said we would no problem give a, a you know mid second for for Jamal Williams going ne- going forward next year. Uh, a lot of questions, obviously, with Aaron Rodgers in that backfield moving forward, but that's for another discussion. Jamal Williams or Alex Collins moving forward. And I think I, I'll, I'll lead this one off. I'm going Alex Collins, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Because the, the Packers' backfield is a little muddy as well, kind of moving forward. And it I, is. I like what Alex Collins is doing. And with A-Rodge in there, the, yeah, the, the opportunities for 20 carries is probably more like 12, realistically. Exactly. Well, you haven't seen Jamal Williams with A-Rodge. And, then, and that's and some people might say, well, it only gets easier from here, and sure it will. But now you have the most efficient passer in the history of the NFL coming back, and just gonna, now Jordy's going to catch his twenty, you know, touchdowns right. per season again. He's going to be back on that rate. And Devonte Adams really is, you know, continued to come out of his shell. Randall Cobb, if he's healthy, he's a threat in the red zone. But I don't uh, know how many of those dudes are going to be back. I mean, Jordy's probably going to be back, but I think Devonte is a free agent, and Cobb is owed a decent amount of money that they could cut ties with. I think they'll bring like one of those guys it back, but I don't know. They signed Adams. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why they wouldn't. So like watching like well, last week's game against Jamal with Jamal Williams, right. like he he got another game where it was like first and goal on like short and they gave it to him three, three straight times. Sure. Yeah, right? That didn't happen and Brett Rogers. Hundley was just dumping the shit down right. of the ball, and he was just catching. And I love yeah. Jamal Williams' skill set, and I love how smooth he looks in the passing game, and I love the grittiness between the tackles. I just I love everything about Jamal Williams, but I'm a little bit dampened knowing that Aaron Rodgers is going to come back because there's, no, there's never going to be another game yeah. where the dude gets three goal line rushes in a row. Right. And what's fared well for Jamal Williams is how well he has responded in the passing game and looked so fluid and awesome. good in the passing game and finding the open spot to sit down, knowing where to sit down. Yeah, he caught that little touchdown that nobody was around him over there, yeah. but he had to get over to that spot, sit down, and and keep his feet inbounds and score the touchdown. So, you know, you were kind of looking for Aaron Jones to be that guy, but maybe you found a guy who can kind of do it all, and I'm not – I don't have any problems with Aaron Jones either, but no, it hadn't been long. Jamal Williams. A couple Aaron, weeks, a couple weeks back, I was singing Aaron Jones's praises. Yeah, but he's um, not. He's not 100 percent healthy. He that's a three to six week injury, and he's not. He, he can't be all the right, all the way right back, and they're probably limiting him. Yeah, because of that. So I'm and not smartly, like ready to just be like, oh it. dang, Aaron Jones is as good as I thought he was. So yeah. we're going room, room over. We're going Collins. Over, I didn't over say Jamal I don't Williams. Know. What do you got? I don't know. I guess it is a tough call. It's a real, real close one. Give me Alex Collins. All right. Because I still like Ty Montgomery. Oh, Simeon's I still going like, off on uh, the cart. I still like... Uh, oh, we got the still game. like Ty Montgomery. I don't... Let's just give the listeners a perspective here. We got... We're in a new podcast room, and we got a window that's open to the living room, and we can watch this Thursday night game that's going on right now, but Jay Wayne has his back to the game, so I'm <laughs> looking at these two jabronis watching the game, oohing and on, and... You can watch it through my eyes. Your boy Jack Doyle just had to catch a minute ago, but you were going on a, on a rant, and I couldn't tell you about it. Nice. All right, let's move... Let's let's quickly not get too bogged down with, with uh, 
player comparisons, but let's move to some wide receivers here, and let's start with with uh, uh, and comparing who you Alex Collins and a receiver, just to give you a little bit different, you know, side of things here. Uh, how about Josh Doxson or Jam or yeah, Jamal Williams, <laughs> Alex Collins? Give me Josh Doxson. You you're going Josh Doxson. I'll Why? take Josh Doxson because I want to take a stab at that dude who I still think can be the number one guy who can be a. a a ridiculous touchdown scoring machine. He but, just floats up in the air. But the breakout age, though. <laughs> How many players have been good after have coming into the league at 23, 24 years old? Who gives a flying fuck? Yeah, agreed. And this dude, he, like, no, he's not had that great of a season. Like, if you look at all the stats and the, the targets and the yard, yardage totals, what like, Roto World receiver will has. beat him down. But exactly. They're not throw, they're not into the wide receivers over there in Washington right now. They, they are a little more than they were in the – Front quarter right. of the season, right? But. Well, that's because they can just throw it up fifteen feet in the air, and Josh Doxson will come down with it. Like, and that's what—that's something. That's a special ability that can't be earned or taught. You're just given that ability, and if you can, if you can, if you can get his head right, and, and he looks yeah. like he's healthy, he's like kind of push these Achilles tendonitis to the side, which you can get rid of. So that's good. And he's just the flashes that I've seen from him are. What I'm about in Dynasty, I want these big, strong, tall, long, down-the-field wide receivers that are going to yeah. make my day in one play and maybe evolve into something even better than that. So, Big Co? Um, I like the flashes that I've seen out of Dachshund. I love the red zone prowess there out of him. Uh, you know, but you just relate it to what's been stinging you you know i'm i'm i would i would say that i would take collins right now over Doxon and try to do something with him and and i probably would i probably will regret that in 12 months but let me take the well, we're talking me, about right now yep let me take and, let me take the running back that people want versus the project receiver because there's tons of receivers and again i will always come back and devalue the wide receiver until he's solid and solidified himself and and maybe but his dynasty you got to get him before he's solid and solidified himself. There, there's always windows. There's windows to buy in. I can probably get more than Josh Doxson for Alex Collins right now, right? Maybe from the right People guy. People like hate Josh, but Doxson, like somebody right? like Casey. Casey loves Josh Doxson. Yeah, I mean, I, I what do, are you doing? I think I'm going Collins. There you go. I think I do I'm really. Surpri that surprises I, me. I know. Well, I do really like. I don't. I just don't know what the hell's going on. And the Redskins are just such a toxic organization, exactly. man. Exactly. And I don't know what's going on with that quarterback situation. I do like what they've been doing with Josh Doxson. I do think Josh Doxson can be really good from the 20 going into the end zone. He could be one of the best in the game. I think his vertical game kind of prowess and, and his leaping ability and all that kind of stuff. He's really good with the ball in the air. He tracks the ball well. He'll come down with the ball nine times out of ten if you throw it to him in the back of the end zone. Um, but with that being said, I think Collins will have more value and carry more value going into next year. Um, unless something crazy happens. Right. And so Agreed. You know, I, I'm going to take this as a little bit more of a business than anything else. And I, I, it hurts my heart, but I'm going to go with Collins over Josh Doxson. I, I, you know, but all those kinds of th said things I said about Josh Doxson, those are for you, my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> all right, let's run through a couple more real quick and we'll get off the, uh, off, off old, oh, oh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get off old Alex Collins' nutsack here. Uh, <laughs> nice sound bite. All right, so let's go with a couple of young guys in a row here. Chris Godwin around the table. Anybody? I running thought for back. sure I'd use that cl uh, that 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 uh, sound clip on Big Coat. But we'll take the running back over Godwin. But I'll take Alex Collins over Godwin. The truther? Even though I like Godwin a whole lot. Mm, I think, again, I'm going to use your phrase, this is Dynasty, you're playing the long game, I think. Godwin could be awesome. <laughs> Just, so you take Godwin over Doxon? No, I think so. Oh, wow. I don't Ooh. know. No, I'll go Collins. I'll go Collins right now because just again uh, the, the the value and the and and the business and and blah, 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 blah. yeah, all that. <laughs> How about Kenny All Day Galladay? Give me Alex Collins. Give me the running back, even though my Lions need Galladay to come on strong. We need uh, him. But Marvin Jones is coming through and did what I told you he was going to do at the beginning of the year, and he's taking a, a spot from what Galladay thought. He, you know, in preseason, Galladay's catching touchdowns, and Marvin Jones has obviously had some injury history recently, and 
Just there a was, foot, but he's out. There was, he hasn't had any foot problems. There was some things to be said about Marvin Jones' durability coming to the year, and then Galladay's looking strong, and he's the next Calvin and all this kind of stuff, and then Marvin Jones is healthy, and he shows that he can actually play some really good wide receiver in the NFL. So I, I like Galladay a ton, but, I mean, I got to take the running back who's playing and getting – I mean, any running back points are way more value, valuable than wide receiver points. All right, well, let's do two more. We'll go Bobby Woods here. Flat again, another guy. Kind of, I like this one because he's kind. He kind of came on strong, kind of like Collins is. It's kind of a, yeah, a one year kind of thing right here. Great comparison. What do you? What do you? Let's start with Big Co here. I'm. I'm a, my, my I was a Bobby Wood hot. guys. We 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 preached Bobby Woods at the end of your draft last year. This mm-hmm. is Robert Woods. In case anybody's missing that, right? Robert Woods <laughs> that, on the no Rams. There's no reason that he shouldn't be on any, all of your teams with McVay and all money. that coming. You know, cheat you all that. Yeah. Way back in January of last year. Robert Woods or Alex Collins, who you got? Robert Woods. Woo! You got an explanation for that? I, I absolutely do. I did just say running back points are more valuable than wide receiver points, but the plays that Robert Woods were making, what's funny is is that for us, we did. We came on here and we were crushing Robert Woods. We were just, you know, go get him, go get him, go get him. He's absolutely free. And then they will go and pull off the last second deal and bring in Sammy Watkins and you're like, well, that had to just, you know, that had to dampen down a little bit for sure. You don't go and bring in a stud A class receiver and then, you know, not lose some some toutiness. Oomph. Yeah, lose a little spring in that thing. So Robert Woods goes and just plays through it, and McVeigh does things that nobody saw, saw coming out of the Rams and turns it over faster than even we liked the p- possibilities of what could go on over there. But nobody saw the the drastic turnaround with that type of speed. And then Robert Woods comes out here and he's making plays. The I mean, a bit a big play to the house. Touchdowns are fluky, but like you could just if you go back and watch Robert Woods highlights to make the plays that and that that offense. It's like that's the Rams offense are going. That's that's something that you're going to be trying to pile on. They got Gurley who can just keep everybody honest Mm -hmm. and golf who, you know, was had a horrible rookie season and just complete turnaround. If it wasn't car for, if it wasn't for Carson Wentz, Jared golf will be getting so much praise right now. And that whole Rams has they that whole offense just has so much momentum moving and that obviously potential potential momentum. We'll see what happens. They, I mean, what the Rams are going to the playoffs. You know, most likely, most likely, the Rams are going to the playoffs. Tough. They NFC. could. It, it's very tough. But I'm just this far into the season, Rams and playoffs is laughable for the last. Should have beat the Eagles most in of this last game. Could have. Could have. And that that's my thing is I, I think that Robert Woods came in, played his way through a rough depth chart on the uh, uh, all of a sudden crowded depth chart, and I think that he has staying power in an offense that is completely going streaking straight up. And I just I think Robert Woods is here to stay. Jason, I don't know Robert Woods or Alex Collins. What do you think? For your pleasure, uh, I'm going Collins. There Give it is, Collins. Take Collins. I want to take Collins too. Right. I love love what Bobby Woods has been doing. I do too. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna reverse the situation. I'm gonna take a guy I got in the late mm. rounds. I'm gonna cash him out for somebody else who could be a potential three down running back mm-hmm. and just flip-flop because i'm a firm believer in obviously you found alex collins at the bottom of the uh waiver pool here but i'm a firm believer that i could find catches yeah yeah but Rob, in, in robert woods things. has a breakout age in the 97th percentile yeah mm-hmm. well must be good then all right well you said you said you had two let's let's get let's get out of here you got one more who what do you got Kate? all right let's go let's go nelson aguilar or alex collins alex collins 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 yeah. everyone's on collins I'll, I'll go with you. I'll ride with y'all. Let's go, Collins. I just there's a guy who broke out a little bit this year who had some naysayers, so I think threw yeah, it all like there. Yeah, like Aguilar, just I'll take Collins. All right, agreed. That's a wrap. Wrap it up. Wrap it up before flexing. Let's go to break. <laughs> 